Hello everyone, and welcome to day 78 of our blog series on John's Gospels themes, looking at power. Today is the final day of this series, so I hope you found it useful and enjoyable. I'm so sorry if you're expecting Gemma today, um, but she's asked me to do today's blog, um, as her voice is a little bit croaky and she's speaking rather quietly. Um, this is the sort of event that actually occurs with the same frequency as Haley's Comet coming past, so we're in no sense we're making the most of it, but um, I'm sure she'll be fine soon, she's not too bad, she's just a bit croaky. The reading today <clears throat> excuse me, is very well known, the personal favourite of mine is Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 1 to 12, the Beatitudes, like a code of conduct for all of us to adhere to. It's Jesus' own update on the Ten Commandments. Put simply, it's a list of do's, blessings to be aspired to, as opposed to a list of don'ts. So let's just read the passage together now. Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets, they were before you. So it's a very well-known reading. Uh, these Beatitudes, in the sense, are a symbol of the new world that Jesus promised and brings all our themes that we've been looking at in the Gospel together. We've looked at John over the last six weeks ago, but the Beatitudes are not all a set of social niceties. It's a tough ask. There are tough issues and tough challenges. The Beatitudes gives no rank, structure or pecking order. The first really will be the last, and the last first. There is no rich over poor, black over white, white over black, straight over gay. These are themes to bless and inspire everyone, and that is their power. It was the start, really, not just to the inclusive church, but the inclusive world as God really intended it to be. We do not own the world. We do not own creation. As I said in my last blog, it's all a gift from God that we should cherish and care for. The power is not really based on physical strength, the creation of fear or the creation of conflict. It's based on love. Much of Jesus' life was conducted amongst crowds, in the temple, in the Sermon on the Mount, on a packed hillside, in the marketplaces. He also made time for prayerful solitude, away from the crowds, time to think and reflect, to be with his Father in prayer. The Beatitudes, those statements of blessing, were spoken by Jesus to encourage Christians in their daily faith and give them hope. Each saying speaks of a divine blessing that will be bestowed on a person who possesses certain character traits. And whilst they were written for their time, each one still promises a future reward of how people will be viewed and treated. Each beatitude shows the ideal heart of a citizen of God's kingdom. It portrays the true disciple, someone like Francis of Assisi, who devoted his life to God, gave away all his possessions to the poor, and lived a life of humble poverty and service. The Beatitudes portray the gentle power, the beauty of gentle power, that subtle spirituality that makes us one with God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for example. We have peace with God through Jesus, and reconciliation through this brings the peace of restored hope and fellowship with God. God entrusts us with taking reconciliation to others, particularly those yet to meet him in any sort of faith. Blessed are those who are persecuted, just as Jesus faced persecution, so will possibly his followers. All of this offers a challenging but wonderful vision of a new way of living as we move forward. Much will have changed, much maybe still will, for us as we move forward through this pandemic, for example. And it's been such a challenge for us in so many and so many ways, including for those whom lockdown, dare I say, is already a normality. The lonely, the weak, the vulnerable, the Beatitudes, in a sense, were written for them. But for all of us, in how we treat each other, it's Jesus' agenda he wants to meet us at. And we are not able to just give our apologies and not show up. 
We need to see and hear and live out the good news of the kingdom. We must also recognise that it's close at hand so that we can both be and make true disciples. I really hope you've enjoyed these blogs on selected themes in John's Gospel. We've ended with power. Monday we start our journey to the manger, so it really is time for Christmas. Have a good rest of the day, everyone. God bless. Bye for now.